Hey guys, today I'm going to show you how to drop the gas tank. This will be for an 88 to 91 Honda Civic or CRX. When first starting this job, it's easier to remove the gas tank if you have very low fuel or if you just want to go ahead and remove it. This right here is the drain plug. It's a 17 millimeter. If you have a lot of gas and you have a container to drain it into, you can go ahead and do that. I drove this car till it had less than a gallon left in it. That way it's a lot less heavy when you drop the tank. It's, it can be very difficult uh, getting them dropped and it's so heavy. So if you want to do that, either run it down till there's very little gas left or go ahead and drain it and dispose of it. Not necessarily dispose, but put it in a container where you can go ahead and reuse it when you get either the new gas tank uh, fit in or if you're just changing the fuel pump and the fuel sock itself. Before starting anything else, make sure you disconnect your battery. Go ahead and remove these three Phillips screws. Disconnect this connector. Go ahead and pry back the boot. Disconnect. There we go. We need to get the plastic cover removed. 10 millimeter bolt there. You have another one up here. You have a little Phillips screw right there. Also a Phillips screw right here. And one more Phillips screw right there. Now after you have the, the plastic cover removed, we need to get a handful of lines removed before we can lower the gas tank. The first is this 14 millimeter right here. I would suggest using this kind of wrench. This is a line wrench. That way you don't strip this. And go ahead and remove that first. After you have this first one removed, you have two 10 millimeters on each side to remove this bracket. That way when you remove the gas tank, it can just all come as one piece. Second, we're gonna need to get this line removed. It's basically, I need a pair of pliers and slide the clip away from the wire. The third is this one right here. Go ahead and use pliers again, maybe a needle nose plier, slide that away, pull that away from the nipple. And the last two, this is the filler, filler neck. You need to use a Phillips, loosen this, slide it down. This one, the pliers, pull that away. Those are all connected to the gas tank, which we need to have disconnected so we can lower the tank. Your next step, we're gonna be lowering the gas tank. I like to use my hydraulic jack with a block of wood to hold it in the spot. But first, you can go ahead and start removing one of these. It's a 12 millimeter. You may need to use a wrench if you don't have a deep enough socket to loosen it up. Once you get that one loose, the first one will still be holding the gas tank in place. Then you need to support it with your block of wood. Get both of those gas tank straps dropped and then we can slowly lower the gas tank. Pretty easy. This gives you full access to your fuel pump. Great time to change it if you're changing the tank. I'm gonna do the same. Here's the old gas tank. The new gas tank we are replacing it with. This one has, it's nice, it came with the new gaskets 
for the fuel pump and also for the sending unit. So that'll be real nice. The only thing I'm considering, these little rubber flaps, these help protect against the vibration where the new one doesn't have it. I guess I'm gonna, I'm gonna run to the hardware store and see if I can find something. Or if not, maybe I'll just glue these back on with the, yeah, cause this, this still looks like it's in good shape. I could just replicate the area where they were. I think I'm gonna do that. I probably have some high strength adhesive instead. As long as they all come off, yeah, they're all coming off really easily. Um, looks like it's a little bit thicker than silicone. Maybe like a, I don't know what kind of glue to use though. I'm gonna have to look it up real quick online and figure out what kind of glue I'm gonna use to get these put back onto the new fuel tank. Aside from that, you're gonna need to get the sending unit and the fuel pump removed. Fuel pump just consists of a handful of, these are 10 millimeters. There's the one, two, three, four, five, looks like six nuts on top of the fuel pump. You're gonna remove that and we're gonna to want to keep the lines that it's associated with. This one has a 10 millimeter on the bottom right here. You're gonna to need to get that up so we can put this bracket with the hard line to the fuel pump onto the new fuel tank. Same with the purge unit and any of the lines. If you're replacing the lines, um, now it's time to do so. I did not have time to get those replaced. I'm just going to use these. They were not leaking. And uh, I need to use the car in two days for an event that we have. So maybe I'll make an opportunity, take the opportunity to change them next time. I have some free time. It's only a couple, but I will need to drop the tank. But it's really not that difficult. So I'm going to leave those for now, but I am going to swap those, clean them up and swap them to the new gas tank. To get the pads on, what I'm going to use, I'm going to use some RTV silicone. Usually for the oil pumps, water pumps. Now this says it's not to, not to, not not recommended for use on head gaskets or parts in contact with gasoline. Now I know it's going on the fuel tank, but it should not be in contact with any parts that are gasoline because that's why I'm replacing the tank. The old one was leaking. Should stay uh, completely dry up here. Plus the gasket's uh, relatively pliable once it dries. It can move a little bit, so I think it'll help cushion these pads on top of the fuel tank. I'm gonna go ahead and get all those put on. That way they have a lot of time to dry before I put the tank on. This piece is like a tar. It's a little different than the, the rubber pieces that I swapped over. Unable to salvage it. So that one we're just gonna leave alone. If you're happy with the results of that, let's move on to the sending unit. A little ring that locks into place with these three little clips. We need to hit it and spin it so that way this opening slides to there, that there, and this one there of course. That way we can slide it straight up. So use like a little hammer. I'm gonna use a hammer in my screwdriver right now and just try prying at it but make sure you don't damage it. Now mine came with this gasket. It was on there, but it doesn't belong there. I would recommend changing it. This one is a little old, it's falling apart. Get that pride off, put the new gasket on there. Now the old gasket was tight on there. This one's loose. It's just cause it's new and it's not stretched out like the other one. The other one was stretched out and it was actually buckling up in that corner there. So let's get this set back into the new gas tank. Once you get all three of these little tabs tucked underneath, go ahead and start hitting them around to lock them into place. Now this new clip, it had these little grooves. I don't know if you can see it, it's right in there. That 
took the last couple hits to knock it into place and that kind of locked all three of these into position. So right there is good enough and you're set. This uh, this is actually, this, this gauge shows you how much fuel you have on your gauge cluster. It's the fuel level sending unit. Okay now, take off the six 10 millimeter nuts and take off the one that holds the line here. This is on the bottom side. This one's gonna be facing this way. That way you can get this, we're gonna get the fuel pump removed. Now the wires that are connected here, it slides into this clip, comes around, and it was actually underneath these clips. Now these are, are pretty unique in the way you remove them. Let me show you. This, it doesn't just slide up, you can't pull it. What you need to do is get a little screwdriver in there and you pry and just open it up a little bit and they slide right off. Basically these open up and they squeeze back onto it. You can kind of see, I don't know if you can see it after I clean it, you can see how it's tapered. So that clip just slides right onto it when you slide them open. So go ahead and get those removed because we're gonna to want to transplant these to the new, new fuel tank. I will bend that up and then put it on there. Same with the second and third one, which are going to be right here. And even though these are not used, there was nothing hooked up to these. I'm gonna use it to tuck the line back underneath here and hold the electrical line in place. So go ahead and get these two removed. Just your screwdriver again, pry apart, pull those out. And when you have the lines free, you can now get this fuel pump removed. Little clips and wires in there catching on something. There we go. Just like that. We're gonna change that fuel pump. I got a brand new one. And we're gonna put a new fuel pump strainer on it as well. Now changing the fuel pump is relatively easy. I'm just gonna slide it off. This one has a new plug, so we're gonna to need to tie these wires in to the old wires. I'll probably cut and solder those, or maybe use a butt connector. Um, more than likely I'll solder them together. But all you really need to do is just kinda of slide it off right here at the bottom. There you go. And then disconnect, slide these two up disconnect the the hose and get the wires disconnected here's the orientation of the old pump when replacing the fuel pump strainer you need to make sure you have a correct strainer that dips into the fuel pump pump the fuel tank at this angle the pump slides in and this strainer leans down and forward if you get an incorrect one you're gonna show on your on your gas gauge that you have maybe anywhere from a quarter tank to half tank, and you'll be starting to run out of gas. I've seen issues of this online where if you look up the 91 Honda Civic SI fuel pump strainer at AutoZone, it's gonna give you an incorrect part number. These are two that work the same. First one is the Delphi, part number FS0083. The second one is the Airtex FS121. Now AutoZone used to sell the Airtex, they no longer do. I had ordered this one online and I was waiting for it to show up today. So I had gone to the store, I went to AutoZone, picked up the Delphi. If you specify an 88 CRX DX model, they will give you this fuel pump strainer, which is the correct fitment. And you can tell by the orientation of, see how this, where it attaches to the center of the fuel pump? That's gonna attach here and when that's on, it basically goes exactly in this direction. So it's gonna leave it in the appropriate direction, but both will work. Just make sure you have the correct one when installing the fuel pump strainer. Get this small washer removed. We're gonna reuse that with the new strainer. Get the little cap removed off your new fuel pump. Let's get your strainer installed. You'll see what I mean by the way this attaches, the way it drops into here, it only goes a certain direction. 
and it's going to sit exactly like that, which dips it right into the gas tank. Similar to the old one and the new one, the orientation is going to be exactly like that. And then get that little washer back on to hold it into place. Next thing I'm going to do on this pump, go ahead and wire those up, get them soldered together. After that, we're going to connect the hose which connects the pump. After getting your new fuel pump and strainer on, let's get this gasket removed because we're going to change it with the new one. You should be able to slide it down around all the wires and everything. This one seems like it's in good shape, but we have the supplied new one, so we're going to go ahead and use that one. Pretty easy to put on. There's a couple of... There's a couple of nipples that poke through the top. All you got to do is line them up and push them in. Once you have that on, let's go ahead and drop your new fuel pump into the gas tank. And put on your 10 millimeter bolts and get that one secured. If any of these clips are bent down, bend them up into the correct position. Next, go ahead and remove this bolt. This is an 8 millimeter. Once we remove this, it holds the whole assembly together. We can just look, remove this hose and then pull the whole assembly together and apply it to the new gas tank. You're gonna to need to remove this bracket. This serves as the nut for that bolt you just removed so it'll hold it to the new gas tank. Go ahead and squeeze these back down and make them tight again. And I'll straighten this out because this is where it bolts up to. Well, it's off a little bit, so I won't be able to tighten it. I'm gonna use a nut instead. Here it is, everything completely reassembled. Now we just need to lift it back up and connect everything back together. One thing I like to suggest is do not forget about putting these up into the car before you try putting the tank up. I have done it before where I forgot I lifted the tank and these were hanging down and there's literally no room to get the connections back up. So don't forget about these. Let me show you how I usually get mine lifted back up onto the car. The first thing you want to do is get your fuel tank straps back into place. They're highly flexible so you can bend them around the exhaust if you need be because once you tighten them they'll come back to their original form. And get your tank ready to slide up into position and the wires, for me, I like to leave the wires sitting on top. That way, once I get it up a little bit, I can go inside the car and pull them through and then lift the gas tank completely up. Here I got the jack underneath it. I lifted it up slightly so there's still a little bit of wiggle room. I didn't uh, put any pressure on it. I didn't want to dent my fuel tank. And you can see, enough room to pull the wires through. Get those through and I can also tell that I need to slide the tank to the right a little more and then I can bolt up the fuel straps and 
finished connecting everything for the gas lines on the side. Here's a look at everything buttoned up. You got the two hoses for the filler neck, the EVAP hose, and you got the two feed lines, feed and return lines. Next, you need to get your plastic cover. That'll be it, you're finished. Hope this helps you out. If you need any, any kind of pointers, please leave a comment. And as always, thanks for watching.